morning, uh, afternoon, or evening uh, to all of you. Thank you all for, for joining. Um, today's ambassador's call for the Americas in Europe. Um, if you haven't already, please do uh, go on the agenda for the meeting. I'll drop it one more time, one last time in uh, the go to uh, chat room. Here it is. So we've got a, a quite a lot of things to, to talk about. Um, but before I begin, I, I just want to remind everyone that we do have a different, a slightly different format now for our calls. Uh, and we have uh, what we call uh, a guest speaker lightning talk. So every, uh, every two weeks, we have uh, a guest speaker um, joining the call to share his or her uh, share a little bit of, of information on, on their projects that, as it relates to Onos and Cord, and that is, uh, is relevant uh, for ambassadors. So um, uh, our first guest speaker was Meredith Solberg from the Linux Foundation. She gave us a great presentation on PR and why and how her team works with, uh, with Owen Lab and you know, why PR is, is a very important piece of uh, the puzzle when it comes to you know, promoting and educating people about Onos and Cord. That was a great um, presentation and the slides are in the meeting notes of, so that this was last month. And then our second guest speaker was Charles uh, Chen who uh, gave us a great uh, presentation on um, Trellis and um, Cord. Um, and he also shared some uh, very nice uh, slides that um, are open to everyone to use and to um, reuse or fork for if, if ambassadors want to use them for their presentation. And so this, uh, for this call, we have uh, Asim Parikh, who, is, uh, who joined uh, One Lab uh, recently. Uh, he's our VP of Partnerships and Solutions. Um, and so he will be uh, sharing a little bit uh, about his, um, you know, the the projects that he's working on and, and his role in the organization and how he plans to, you know, work with ambassadors and support them. So, um, I told the team that you know he will be um, speaking in about 25 minutes. Um, so he'll be dialing in a little bit later in the meeting. So there. So um, let's uh, jump in into the agenda. The first. Um, the first item, and by the way, uh, please uh, please feel free to take some notes. I, I do have a, uh, you know, trouble uh, walking and chewing uh, gum at the same time. So if anyone can take some notes while I'm while I'm talking, that'd be that'd be fantastic. Um, so the first item on the agenda is uh, just a general update on, um, you know, the ambassadors program uh, and the work we're doing to really take it, you know, activate ambassadors and take the program to the next level. Um, you know, we kind of laid the, we, we planted the seeds and laid the foundations uh, the second half of last year, and now um, now we're going to take it into overdrive and, and start um, going from, you know, um, activating ambassadors and empowering ambassadors to, to run activities and, you know, start building communities in their part of the world. So um, to do that, you know, we've identified a bunch Or, you know, during the ambassadors call these past uh, weeks, uh, since you know the beginning of the year and late last year, and so we um, put everything organized. And when I say we, it's the A team, the ambassador steering team. Um, we organized everything in uh, Trello board. Uh, I'm sure some of you are familiar with Trello, uh, but if you're not, it's a it's a quite a, a neat tool to um, to project manage. And so um, there's a link in the agenda. Um, that, that links to this board, and so basically, you know, we have uh, little cards uh, that represent a specific tasks and a task, and then uh, we have basically these. We have a to do, we have a to do list, and then we have uh, in progress and and done uh, column. And so whenever we have a card that's uh, in progress, we move it to the right, and then when it's done, we move it to the done column. So um, this Trello board is uh, really going to be. Uh, Kind of our central dashboard to um, to uh, monitor the progress that we're making on uh, you know for all the different um, initiatives and activities that we'll be running this quarter and next. And um, so um, this is open to the public. Anyone can follow this. Uh, this is managed by the ambassadors steering team, um, and so um, you will see that this is actually going to be updated quite substantially tomorrow. Tomorrow we have. Our, um, so we, we just rebooted 
the ambassador steering team meeting. Uh, so um, steering team members uh, will be meeting tomorrow to go over the Trello board, discuss it, fine tune it, and uh, make more uh, assign more tasks to more people. So um, we'll be updating this, and you can really monitor this. And then so uh, we're going to make it um, kind of a a ritual now, every ambassador's call um, will be kind of doing a quick overview of all the different um, kind of milestones or accomplishments of the past uh, two weeks. Um, any questions regarding this, regarding the Trello board or the A-team or anything around this? No? Okay. Cool. Um, all right, so moving on. Um, you'll notice that one uh, one important uh, task on the Trello board um, uh, revolves around uh, a budget request process. Um, we've talked a lot about this, you know, for the past couple of months. This is going to be, um, you know, a, a, a very big uh, activator of um, uh, for for ambassadors. Um, and you know, for those who are less familiar with uh, this, you know, this concept of budget requests, basically. We're going to be implementing soon a system whereby an ambassador who has an identified a uh, an activity or an event or um, a project that is onos or cord related that he or she wants to uh, participate in or drive and that requires some uh, to be able to. There's going to be a process where uh, an ambassador can uh, make a request for for some funding. Um, and then that request is reviewed by the ambassador steering team, and um, and based on a set of criteria that will have you know you know documented clearly, um, the ambassador steering team will will you know vet it and approve it or reject that um, that request. And so um, this is you know it's on the surface it sounds pretty straightforward, but there is a little bit of you know. Uh, Kind of design and implementation that takes a little bit of, of time, and also because you know we're dealing with some you know uh, financial resources, uh, there needs to be some good you know with um, with one lab accounting and with uh, you know ambassadors, and and um, we want to make sure that there's full uh, you know transparency, accountability, all that. So um, all this is is uh, currently being designed and implemented, and and hopefully you know it's in the next couple of weeks we'll have you know a prototype that we'll be testing it out, probably in a in a you know for, for you know we'll ask some beta testers, some some ambassadors to test the process, uh, but hopefully by the end of the quarter you know we'll have you know we'll have we'll it'll it'll go live. And um, so for now, um, there is a, a, a kind of a, um, I guess, a, a user flowchart that um, you can uh, cl uh, click click on. I, I put the link on the on the agenda, um, and it kind of it walks you through at a very high level the different process the, the process that uh, an ambassador will go through to uh, to um, request a budget, have it approved, and then receiving the, the actual funds to run his or her activity. Um, and so I won't, um, I won't walk you through the whole process now. You can, you can read through it. Um, uh, and if you have any questions, um, you know, this is, a, you know, I think the next ambassador's call will be a, a great forum to discuss this. Uh, we're going to, as I mentioned, tomorrow we'll have the A-team ambassador uh, steering team meeting where we'll be uh, discussing this. This flowchart is really kind of version 0.1, so it's something that we really still need to, to kind of review and, and polish and fine-tune. Uh, but basically this, I think, articulates more or less really the the... The general flow um, um, for for the ambassadors uh, when he or she will be requesting um, a budget for activity. So, if um, does anyone have any any questions about this? Have a have a quick look at the the flowchart, and if you have any questions, please do flag them, or you can also ping me after after the call. Okay. Great. All right. So let's uh, move on. Um, if there are no uh, questions, uh, let's move on to the next item, which is uh, just a general event update. So last ambassador's call, we shared a spreadsheet um, that um, a group 
um, uh, of us who are you know uh, quite you know focused on on events and ident you know uh, identifying uh, relevant events for us uh, during the year we we, we produced the spreadsheet um, that uh, listed it's not an exhaustive list we're trying to make it as exhaustive as possible but basically I think it's already a pretty strong list of of events that you know are uh, quite uh, important for us uh, as ambassadors to to be president or to participate in, and you'll notice that you know, advertise them much. You know, a P1 event is not necessarily uh, you know much more important than a P2 event. A P a priority was also based on the the actual you know scope of the event and the the size of the event. So um, consider all these events in the spreadsheet. Um, uh, important to participate in, and um, as I mentioned, this is not you know this is uh, certainly not a final list. You know we'll be we're continuously updating it, and if you do have any uh, if you have uh, an event in mind that you think would be very important for for uh, an ambassador to uh, to attend, um, um, please uh, you know please do flag it. Um, send an email on the um, on the ambassador's alias. Or uh, directly to, to to the A team, um, and um, and uh, we'll be updating this this spreadsheet. Now, I want to stress how um, important you know this ties back to the budget request process that I mentioned. So, um, typically the the typical uh, scenario will be you know you will, let's say you identify uh, an event. Uh, let's take uh, just for example a mobile World Congress in uh, in Barcelona. Um, you know, we identified this as as an important event in, in Barcelona, Spain, and we think that you know uh, we think that it, it um, warrants uh, having at least you know one ambassador there. And uh, let's say you're you know uh, we'll call him Juan. Juan is an ambassador based in Madrid, uh, who uh, who's you know quite well versed in. Uh, in the cord, and the cord it so happens cord will be a big focus, uh, you know, at, at um, uh, our, uh, at Mobile World Congress. Juan will, you know, request a budget request, um, would fill a report, um, a form to request a budget uh, to attend Mobile World Congress, um, or maybe you know just to cover. Uh, say uh, a train ticket from Madrid to to Barcelona, um, and then uh, in the request process, you would uh, specify that you know Mobile World Congress is was identified as a priority event for ambassadors, and uh, and he plans to uh, you know give a talk or have a booth at at, at Mobile World Congress uh, for the week, and needs you know 250 euros to cover his expenses there. So this is a typical example of how you know the budget request process and this event, this list of of, of events of priority events that we've identified, you know how those two come together. And so we're going to try to streamline it and make it very, you know, just make it as easy as possible for important events to be discoverable by ambassadors, and of course make it easy for ambassadors to um, to uh, very quickly and effectively you know obtain. Some financial resources, if needed, to attend an event. Um, any questions around uh, the event calendar or the list of the spreadsheet with uh, with events so far? I'm sure there's some that are missing. And um, so, William, this is me. Yes. So, for yes, each P1 event, do we um, do we have the owner assigned for each one already? So they already started the planning. So in order to participate, right? So uh, if, are they going to share the planning of each event, or we'll ask the yeah, event details that, with you? Yeah, huh? that's that, that's a great point. That's a great point. Um, I think that you know this. So this this list was just you know created, and I, I certainly agree that you know we should ultimately each event will have an owner, and we should add, you know uh, indicate who the owner is for the for the for the events, and that owner can you know should. Uh, be tasked to you know share regularly you know the progress of planning or uh, for that for that event and I guess maybe that will be part of the marketing or uh, the, the marketing call uh, that's happening tomorrow if I'm if I'm not mistaken Mene. Um I, I believe that mm -hmm. you know, as soon as we've you know identified an owner for for an event that owner should provide an update at that uh, at the marketing call and if that uh, if that person is not available for that for the marketing call should at least 
you know, give a written update that someone on that call can, can share. Yeah, so I'll make a note on that, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and so, but one other piece uh, I should add uh, regarding events is that, um, so we're, we're actually, we're building out, um, you know, we've been, we're about 90% done with, or 80% done with uh, the ambassador's portal, which, uh, you know, which is going to help us move away from the wiki you know, we built most of the back end, or well, all of the back end, and now we're, we really need to, to, to finish and polish the, the front end. Uh, but once that portal, the portal is ready, you know, and we've mentioned this many times in the past, you know, we will have, uh, we have an events calendar there, that's, or an events manager, I should say, uh, which will enable us to, it will be, a, you know, really kind of a very nice interface to list all the different events uh, that ambassadors are, um, either participating in, you know, organizing, or, um, you know, we'll also um, show events that are potentially interesting for, for, uh, for ambassadors. And so on the ambassadors website, we'll be able to, you know, uh, quickly see the list of all the, all the, all the events. Um, and so it'll be, it'll be actually more useful and, and easier to use than, than, uh, than the current spreadsheet. But I'll give more updates on that for the, for the next call. Any other uh, questions around um, the events calendar? Does anyone, okay, so a question for all of you. Is, does anyone on the call plan to attend any of these events, or at least those that are happening in the next two to three months? Save for ONS, I'm sure everyone won't. I think almost everyone will be at ONS. Yeah, so I will be on as for sure. Okay. Yeah, and yeah. and yeah, and that that's um, the 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 last update I wanted to share also f regarding uh, events is that you know we have about a dozen uh, ambassadors who uh, who uh, responded uh, positively to the to the survey and indicated that they will be attending ONS and that they will be. Uh, helping out um, at you know for the mini summits there and for the Onos core booths um, and once we have um, once we have uh, finalized the schedule for the mini summit and for the you know the format and the number of booths we'll have um, and the types of booths we'll have you know we'll be communicating with uh, all the ambassadors to start co uh, coordinating uh, you know uh, booth duty. And the different logistical support and lessons will be providing for for the mini summit. So that's hopefully that will be. I need to circle back with uh, Asim, who uh, who is overseeing uh, who are overseeing that. Um, okay. If there are no um, no more updates uh, or questions for events. Um, Maybe we can move to brig a brigade update. Um, so I, I, unfortunately, I think David is still in the train, um, and uh, he's not going to be able to give a brigade update. Um, I don't know if um, if uh, Abdul Halim, are you on the the call? I'm not sure Abdul Halim, who's uh, driving the the teaching brigade. Um, I did see a thread where uh, he is um, he is making some um, his brigade is doing some making some great progress and he was uh, he he was going to provide an update um, but I believe he hasn't joined the call. All right, we'll wait uh, for that and we'll I guess we'll wait for um, for David um, to to come into the office to give us a brigade update. And so in the meantime, um, I see that Asim is on the call. Asim, uh, can you hear us? Yes, I can. You can hear me. Good morning. Good, yeah, good morning, Asim. So uh, I did uh, introduce you very quickly uh, at the beginning of the call. I don't know if you were already dialed in. Uh, I no, did. I did, uh, two minutes I did okay, fantastic. Uh, I did uh, say that you know you were our guest speaker, and you were going to uh, um, give us a short uh, presentation on on uh, what you're working on, and um, how it's relevant to uh, to ambassadors. Uh, and so, yeah, without uh, further ado, uh, Asim, um, the floor is yours to, uh, to give us uh, your short presentation. I think you have slides, right? 
Yeah, I want to show a couple of slides to talk about okay. you know, the elastic problem. The Perfect. Theory. So I made you presenter. Perfect. So now, now you can uh, now you can you can show your slides normally. Okay, give me a second. Okay, let me know if you can see my slide, my screen. Yeah, yeah, perfect. Perfect. Okay. All right, everyone. Uh, good morning. Good afternoon. I don't know where everyone is. Uh, I know William is in Europe, so good afternoon to him. Uh, I'm Asim Parikh, and I think I have met some of you already. Uh, but I have joined since November, and my role is to lead the solutions and partnerships uh, for Owen Lab. Uh, Quick background on me uh, before we kind of get into why I'm here uh, is uh, you know been uh, 27 years of uh, working in the in the Silicon Valley in the networking space. Uh, last 17 odd years focused primarily on the communication service providers. Uh, the remaining uh, focus on enterprise networking. So uh, you know a very vast networking background, uh, almost exclusive networking background. Uh, and uh, the last 20 plus years, uh, I've been uh, either co-founder or core team member of uh, small technology startups, uh, technology vendors, uh, seven of them in fact, and uh, have built a lot of solutions uh, and uh, built a lot of large teams and small teams, uh, both uh, in the U.S. Uh, as well as global teams, uh, uh, working with uh, uh, you know uh, as, as a venture capitalized uh, company, uh, have raised. Uh, significant uh, venture money and uh, brought in I think a pretty share a fair share of uh, of returns to my investors so uh, happy to uh, be in that in that wonderful place called Silicon Valley for the last 20 years um, what I specialize in is uh, let me dismiss that uh, what I specialize in is uh, building products uh, and go-to-market uh, strategy for software systems and uh, ASICs, so done across uh, all kind of from the embedded software all the way up to system software and, and network management software, uh, including carrier grade operational intelligence and business uh, intelligence systems, uh, RPL, ADMs, MSPPs, uh, and uh, carrier access network elements, uh, uh, service uh, orchestration systems, CMS, NMS, OSS systems, as they used to be called before. Human, human being, and uh, and done some basic work in the network uh, system on a chip, uh, network processor, and operating system work. So that, that is kind of my background. Uh, uh, I've taken maybe about a hundred different uh, field trials, lab trials, uh, to produ production, uh, working with AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, Vodafone. Uh, Virgin Mobile, uh, Comcast, and Singtel, and uh, so lo and lots and lots of small CLEX uh, uh, carrier, uh, competitive local exchange carriers. So that that is the the overall background. Uh, uh, have partnered with some of the people who are at One Lab, uh, including uh, Ericsson, Juniper, uh, Cisco, uh, and Redis. Uh, so kind of also well versed in the in the business side of uh, of the networking world. Uh, the reason I'm here is frankly um, uh, this, and I think it's captured by this uh, quote. Uh, this was before the election, uh, but uh, it is interesting to see that what m the vast majority of the CEOs think that the next three years will be more critical to their industries than the last 50 years. Uh, this, this is what I think is some extraordinary disruption uh, happening in the marketplace, primarily around the digitized world, internet, networking, uh, mobile, mobility, uh, IoT, all of those things put together, uh, which is going to do this wholesale market transformation, right? And uh, and that that is really a place. Uh, ON Lab is a place which kind of is at the center of this for our industry, the networking industry. And if you look at what the service providers world need is they are in the business of uh, turning capacity and connectivity into profit. So, uh, but it's very clear that their networks are getting 
far too complex and brittle, and hence very expensive to build and operate, which obviously uh, reduces their profitability. So they, they have to look at a disruptive way of going forward as we go from 4G to 5G, as we go from you know 1 gig, 10 gig uh, circuits to 100 gig circuits and 40 gig and 100 gig circuits, uh, uh, even in the fixed wireline space, there is the same mechanics that doesn't add up, right? So if you think about uh, the 20 to 30 X increase in bandwidth which you provide, the customer is expecting that same bandwidth to be cheaper than what he's getting today. So you have 20 X increase in capacity, zero increase or or negative increase in, in, in revenue. How do you bridge that gap? And that's where the disruption and market transformation comes in. So uh, this is this is the the reason I'm I was excited to take on this role uh, where we can guide and be at the center of this uh, this this disruption. Okay, uh, so let's kind of turn this to why what are we focused on, right? And and how does that uh, kind of intersect with this ambassadors program, the whole ecosystem building, and, and so on and so forth. So. At the highest level, there are two major uh, aspiration goals. We want to provide production-ready platforms. Uh, so this is just not a science experiment. This is not about writing papers. This is not about uh, getting uh, you know, PhD degrees. It is about building production-ready platforms, right, which actually get used. So these are the two highest level goals, if I call them the most significant bits of our, of our existence. If you break it down into one level deeper, uh, the production ready platforms require us to have a, a sound architecture which scales into the service provider world uh, and an implementation which goes with it. So it includes things like the right abstractions, extensible uh, so that people can plug and play their, uh, their VNFs and what have you. It, is, it has to be scalable to talk to tens and hundreds of millions of subscribers, high performance, high availability, all of the, all of the things you would expect in a service production ready, service provider ready platform. Okay, and then the second step from there is uh, is where it, it has to become now fully featured, all the bells and whistles have to be put in, uh, deploy, it has to become deployable, and it has to have a, a second level of QA done to make sure that troubleshooting and, and uh, reliability is very robust. So, uh, as you would guess, you know, as a small organization like Owen Lab, the internal resources and the resources we can marshal directly, uh, the 30 odd people we kind of have uh, full time available to us, uh, can barely do the, the sound architecture and implementation correctly. So we have to rely very heavily on the, uh, on the community to build the second part of it, the feature richness, the deployability, the, the QA, level of QA, all of that has to be come from there. Similarly, from driving Actual use case. There are multiple use cases and solutions and POCs which you know, which uh, when Lab tries to bring out to the market, because there is a funnel. Uh, there is a funnel of you start with 100 POCs. You typically, you know, by the time you go through lab tri field trials, lab trials, field trials, and and production deployment, you're going to have a natural shrinking of that 100 POCs into three to five uh, deployments, right? And, and so. You have to start the, with the funnel uh, with a lot more of use cases and POCs. So that is that is where it takes a lot of time from us. Then we have to rely on someone outside the organization uh, to support lab trials, field trials, and production deployments. So uh, what David, William, and I are focused on is building this ecosystem, uh, including the ambassador program, including the uh, the partnerships, uh, including the collaborators, to to bring this level of uh, the second third level of detail uh, into the into the product lines and into the platforms to deliver so here is kind of the same two matrix if you look at it from number of resource perspective uh, this is a pretty telling slide let me move this away okay uh, if you see that uh, on the left on the y axis i have engineering resources uh, in a logarithmic scale so uh, the first 10 and then the next 100 is a top line uh, and on the bottom, if you see what are the co components required to make it a deployable product, and this is what needs to be happening, right? Solution architecture and design, platform enhancements, 
solution app development, base HA, base QA, uh, and, op and open source release. So this first three or four uh, parts of that chain are where ON Lab leads the activities with obviously a lot of support from the community, but the leadership is typically taken by ON Lab. When it starts getting into the next half of that uh, of that chain, uh, custom integrations, hardening, uh, update merging back into the open source trees, and then the customer support, we fully expect uh, that ecosystem uh, has to lead these activities. We are not chartered nor uh, not have the headcount uh, to do this in, in Kavli. So what does this mean from the number of headcount? I've just taken a swag, a, 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 a kind of educated guess at, uh, at these numbers. And as you see, it varies from a few engineers to at the most seven or eight engineers uh, uh, working uh, from the 30 odd engineers we have on a particular solution. And then as soon as you get out of, uh, after the open source uh, software is released, you start going into kind of a support mode. And, and that's where the, the resources from the ecosystems kind of they start taking leadership. Uh, and, and this gap uh, you see between 80 odd resources acquired uh, to the two or three ON lab resources which we can, uh, we can devote to that the problem is, is a resource gap, right? And, and this is actually the reason why you know, the programs that we are running uh, and the development of either collaborators and the ecosystem is important because this is a gap we need to uh, fill. There is no way uh, ON Lab, a nonprofit organization which is basically funded by the industry, can, can put 80, 90 people per, per solution uh, to go to market with. Okay? And, and this is where uh, your support is very valuable. So let's look at the other angle, the similar thing from going, taking the solution from, uh, uh, from lab uh, or from design to, uh, to production. So these are the things, again, which need to happen. We get start with the use case elaboration, understand the use case, understand the need, then do the solution development, which was what we talked about in the previous slide, uh, then start the lab trial, a limited field trial, typically the first field trial, and again, ON Lab would lead most likely this to stop three or four activities and then expect the ecosystem to come in and, and help out leading the extended field trial, the first office application, and the national deployments. And uh, this kind of is a, is a superset of the resources we talked about uh, in the previous slide. Uh, the previous slide talked about this area, solution development area, which was maxed out at eight. Uh, and then, uh, you know, we would be involved a little more in the lab trial and limited field trial, but then taper off very quickly uh, the resources. So here is what is required from the, uh, the, the ecosystem again, and that again is that uh, 20, 30x uh, 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 resource gap, which we, we need to uh, address through the community. Okay. So, uh, at the highest level, uh, our goal is to uh, to ensure that we have resources uh, trained, skilled, and 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 ready to and willing to uh, uh, to provide their valuable time and talents to this this cause. They have to see uh, the vision uh, which ON Lab was formed after, and and continue to uh, you know support the systems going forward. So uh, that's where. Uh, you know, my role is uh, working with partners, collaborators, and, and ambassadors like you, uh, along with obviously David and William. Guys, I uh, hope this was uh, useful, but that, that is all I wanted to speak to, and then I'm, I'm ready to take any questions you have. Thank you so much, I think this was excellent. Thank you very much, and, and uh, I have to say this, uh, these slides uh, are quite beautiful, and I hope that, you know, will be, um, they articulate quite well, you know, where um, you know where the community uh, comes in and how how you know the role uh, the role of the community in terms of you know our success in pushing you know cord and, and onos forward um, and uh, and particularly the the role of ambassadors here so um, thank you so much Asim, for for taking the time to uh, to present this any questions for uh, for Asim?
going once, going twice. Okay. Well, right. thank you very much once again, Nassim. And I should point out this uh, is being recorded. And uh, so for everyone who was, was not able to, uh, to join the, the meeting, uh, we will be providing um, a recording of, of the meeting. So in case you, you know, so for those who, who would like to, to watch the presentation. And the, um, I think if you could share the links, uh, the link to your, to your slide, or maybe drop a, a link in the agenda. Well, I'll, I'll, I'll just uh, sync up with you after so we can, I'll just update. I'll, I'll put it here. I'll, I'll put okay, it up. Fantastic. Thank Thanks so much, Asim. All right. See you guys. All right. Bye bye. Keep up the good work, everyone. Bye bye. Thank you. Thank you. Um, all right. So um, that was for our uh, guest uh, speaker uh, slot. And uh, now I believe David uh, Basel has just arrived and uh, he will be giving us a short update on, uh, on the brigades and the progress we're making on that front. Hey, David? everyone. Apologies. Can you hear me? Hey, good morning, David. You, you can hear me okay? Yep, loud and clear. All right, great. Apologies for arriving late. I was uh, commuting in and just got in. Um, let me just drop one link for everybody if you want to look. Apologies for not getting this on the agenda in advance, but I'll put it on the chat here on the uh, meeting. <clears throat> this is a, to a tracking document that I, I'm uh, using for the current and existing brigade. So if you ever are curious about uh, the status of anything, feel free to just keep an eye on this. And I won't go through it all uh, in detail, but just to give you a, an update, you can see on here that this tracks the existing active brigade. So I'll skip over those because I think we've talked about those in the past. But if you look below those, so line six and below, you can see that there are an, uh, um, a number of uh, brigades that are either starting or pending, and so those are the new ones. You can see there's seven there. So um, again, I won't go through all the details, but just to show you that there are things, movement is happening. If there is anything on here that you're interested in, for example, if you're interested in GRPC or if you know anybody in your communities who are interested in GRPC, uh, there's now a lead for that brigade, so we can uh, connect those people with Aaron, for example, in this case, and, and you know he can bring them up to speed, tell them what's going, you know, is going on with the brigade, and then they can get off, up and running. So it's an exciting time. So as ambassadors, I would just say use this document as um, basically you know an aid for you when you go out and you speak to somebody at an event or in your community or, or wherever you happen to talk to somebody, and you, if you hear that they have an interest in a certain part of uh, ONOS or a certain part of CORD, there will be CORD brigades coming. You know, you can then refer to this document and know who to connect them with. So, for example, if you hear that somebody is really, really interested in localizing ONOS, or that there would be a resource for translating the ONOS interface into Portuguese or Korean or what have you, you know, you can see on here on this document that Elisa would be uh, um, leading that brigade. Although she's not, she's on leave, so she's not starting it yet. But you can see again, the, this document is a reference. For you to use as a resource. So, you know, this document is available. Please, you know, keep it bookmarked. You can come back to it. And, and again, I, I put it in place, you know, so hopefully as a, it's a, as a help for you as you go out and meet people in the community. And, you know, as an ask to everybody here, I am starting the recruiting process and I've been reaching out to people, but if you could do that as well, you know, I'd certainly appreciate it. So I've been sending emails for the past couple of weeks to people to see if they're interested in any of these new brigades, either to lead or to join. So on any of these, if there's not a lead yet, uh, I'm looking for a lead, and if there is a lead, then I'm looking for members. So if you would, you know, if you'd like to assist with the recruiting for the brigades, that would be a, a huge help, and I'd appreciate it. Uh, I, we can talk about it offline if you would like to help more with recruiting, or this might be pretty self-explanatory. Use this as a resource as you go out and meet with people, and um, you know. It would be, uh, uh, I think it's going to be really exciting to scale up the brigades um, and, and get more going because the initial four um, have been a success. You know, I recently put together a list of the uh, people involved with the existing brigades and it was like 40 or more people. And so it's really exciting to see how much enthusiasm there's been for those first four. And so I can only imagine what sort of responses we'll get as we scale up all these other ones as well. So. Uh, so that's it. That's it. I'll, I'll stop talking for a minute to see if there's any questions or comments about this. Thanks, David. 
Um, any questions for David? Okay. Um, there is, I know that Abdul Halim is uh, recently joined the call. And uh, Abdul, uh, do, you, do you feel like, do you want to uh, give us a quick update on, on the, the progress you've made for your brigade? Good evening, everyone. I'm sorry for late. Uh, in fact, we start after tomorrow our first meeting. So this is the last news. We have about 10 uh, members uh, actually, and uh, I hope that we will have more uh, in the future. Um, I think David uh, promoted the uh, this event uh, also to, to reach out to more people. So I don't know if you have a special question to to ask about or. I just wanted to uh, actually I have a quick uh, maybe a logistical question I believe uh, so the meeting the the kickoff meeting you mentioned Abdul uh, Halim will be in, in two days uh, at nine a.m. Pacific time uh, six p.m. Uh, European time, is that correct? Yes, exactly. Right, and I, okay, so I, I guess this, this is a question for David. Uh, there is, I think there's a conflict with the community steering team call, is that, is that correct? Um, there is, but I mean, that's fine. If that works best for the teaching brigade, I mean, they should take that slot. Uh, um, okay, all right, okay. I was in, I, I just wanted to double check that the community steering team call was, was done, was it at the same time, okay. We can maybe later change the dates, but it's in fact it was the uh, the most voted. Uh, slice. Yeah, so I mean, I would I would recommend you just stick to that the time and go ahead with that. I think okay. it's, it's it's important to yeah to get that going. Yeah. Nice. Okay, cool. So um, if there's no um, questions for uh, regarding the brigades um, you know we do have uh, we have covered uh, all the agenda items unless someone else or anyone else has anything else to, to add um, I'll give you 10 seconds to chime in and if after 10 seconds no one utters a word I will adjourn this meeting and I will uh, we will have uh, 15 minutes back of... okay all right. Well, in that case, um, thank you all once again for, uh, for joining the, uh, the Ambassador's Call. Our next call will be next week for uh, Asia and Europe. Um, and um, uh, thanks again, and we'll speak uh, very soon.